hey y'all welcome back to my channel so god pretty much gave me a word to give y'all i was sitting outside with god and so that was just me setting a time setting aside time for just me and god and so um i was about to go in the house and god was just like wait like he said just wait and so outside of my um like outside in like the little park area of my complex there is a um like a slide set right and so when i was looking at it god was speaking to me and giving me a revelation of the um set and so it was a red slide and it was a blue slide and so from the angle that i was sitting in it looked like there was like this yellow piece that was in between the red slide and the blue slide and so um i do have scripture but the red slide had two parts to the slide which had like this thing in the middle to separate it and make it kind of like two slides in a way but it was really like connected like one and um the blue slide was just one part it was just one slide and so the red slide represents the broad and wide gate and then the blue slide represents the straight and narrow path and so um the part of the play set that was yellow that looked like it was between the red and blue slide represented god standing in between both paths right so the scripture that i'll be reading from is matthew 7 verse 13 through 14 enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the road is narrow that leads to destruction and those who enter through it are many how narrow the gate and constructed the road that leads to life and those who find it are few right so god okay the ones who are choosing god the ones who are choosing to choosing to have a relationship with god choosing to grow their relationship with god choosing to do the will of god choosing to spread the gospel god calls us peculiar peculiar yeah god calls us different god calls us set apart you know so um god pretty much calls us peculiar okay um god calls us a different group of people and so it is not a lot of people who choose to follow god it's not a lot of people who choose to do the will of god and do obey god and be obedient it's not a lot of people who choose to um turn away from their sin it's not a lot of people who choose to do differently it's not a lot of people who choose to stop fornicating it's not a lot of people who choose to stop doing drugs and drinking it's not a lot of people who choose to pick up a Bible and read it. It's not a lot of people who choose to sit down and actually have a conversation with God. You know? It's not a lot of people who actually choose to do that. Willingly, God gave us free will. So it's however you decide to use your free will. It's however I decide to use my free will. You know? So many are called, but few are chosen. God says the ones that choose the straight and narrow path are few. Okay. And so God also gave me a revelation that the yellow thing in the, in between the two paths was God that represented God. So God doesn't want you to choose to go through the, the path that everybody is going to that everybody is choosing to do that the world would consider um normal or what the world would consider the right thing to do or everybody does it god he doesn't want you to choose that path and he really wholeheartedly does not want you to go that in that direction he doesn't want you to take that route and at the same time um every good thing comes from god um the straight and narrow path you know what i'm saying it's life it's life transforming like it's um it's a path that will change your life forever for your good and god's glory so um
Mm. Do not fear what others will think about you because you are choosing God. God said, because you're choosing God and believing that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, God said, Jesus said that those who um, deny him will deny him in front of his father, but those who choose not to, he will also, he will tell, like, he will tell God pretty much like, you'll be in the book of life, pretty much like, don't be scared of what others will think of you because you were choosing the path that is right. Don't be scared of what other people may say about you or, you know, think of you because you, cho you chose God because in the long run, in the end, like, there's victory. You know, those who come against you come against God. Those who talk down on you, those who hate on you, those who do wrong to you are doing those things to God. Glory to God, because that's why, like, you shouldn't fear because God is is always with you no matter what. God said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. God said that God is a faithful God. And his word will never return back to him void. And what God says is what he will do. Like, God is not a God that he should lie. So if God says that vengeance is his, then that's what he means. Those those people who talk down on God's children, those people who take advantage of God's children, take advantage of their kindness or take advantage of their weakness. Those who um, wrongfully treat God's children, God is coming back to show them why they should not mess with God's children. Because we are his. And God is going to take it personal whenever somebody does us the wrong way. God is going to take it personal whenever someone talks bad about us. Or whenever people wrongfully do us. God is taking it personal. Because we are his children. Some of God's children go through it repetitively. Some of God's children go through it over and over and sometimes from people that you least expect it but at the same time god will give you discernment and like he will tell you not to go places or not to go around a certain people or not to go with this person or not to do this or not to do that and sometimes we choose to do it on our own like we choose to just see for ourselves and then we end up in a position that will hurt us in the long run but at the same time like it's not right for you to treat God's child any certain way. It's not right for that. It's not right for you to do that. Now, I just encourage because it doesn't matter what point. Because I'm always, I'm always at a low point. Like sometimes God will bring me up. Like God um, woke me up in the middle of the night one night, and it it just felt like He was smiling on me. Like I was cuddling my pillow, like I was hugging Jesus, and I just kept saying, "Thank you, Jesus." Like, because it felt that good. Like, it felt that good. Like, it felt like for once, I was seen at a time where I didn't even think, like, you know, even really mattered. Like, it felt like for once, like, I felt comforted for once. You know, sometimes we fall into lukewarmness. Sometimes we fall short of God's glory. We're going to miss marks. We're going to be imperfect. We're not perfect beings. The perfect man died on the cross for us. But God still cares. It doesn't matter if we're mad or upset or sad. God still wants us to talk to him. God still wants to hear from us. Like, because the enemy will want us to feel ashamed and feel guilty to the point where we turn away from our relationship from God. But as long as we keep seeking God, as long as we keep drawing near to God, he will draw near to us. So, and this was just a really vulnerable moment I just had. Um, but I hope this video encourages somebody. Like, 
at the end of the day, because you have God, you know, giving up is not an option. Um, even though we can't see it through right now, even though it feels like we're not making progress or we're not making enough progress or we're not doing enough. God sees otherwise and God says otherwise. You know? So, God notices, he notices the little things. and He does not forget the little things. God does not forget the little things. God sees our try. Even though we feel like it's not enough or it's nothing. You know, God sees us. So, another point that God wanted me to make was when we do decide to follow God, when we do, you know, decide to turn to God and answer his call. When we do decide to do these things, God does not want us to go ahead of him. God doesn't want us to think that we have to do it on our own. God doesn't want us to, you know, carry on all this weight. God doesn't want us to be perfect. Um, but God wants us to know that he is our help helper. He is our comforter. Um, we can boast in weakness because when we are weak, we are strong because God's strength works perfect in weakness. We're not going to have it all together. But God is ordering our steps, directing our paths. We just have to have faith and believe and trust in God that he is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Um, God won't. God won't leave us astray, even though we turn to we turn away from God and sometimes we fall into sin and, you know, we do things being imperfect. God won't let us stay there. You know, he will come and rescue the ones that he loves. He's going to come back for us. He's not going to forsake us, even though we walk away from him. You know, I deal with the spirit of pride. So I feel like, you know, I don't want people to see me at my lowest. I feel like, you know, due to my background, I just want, I don't want anybody to know when I'm going through something or, you know, that I need help. I really will not ask for help, for real. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but it takes a lot out of me just to ask somebody for help. It's rid of transparency. Um, so I deal with pride. Just allowing God to work in me. On that. Um, but just know that, you know, you can ask God. You can ask your community. You can ask anybody in the position of being your support. You can ask um, teachers. You can ask anybody for help. But, you know. A trusted person for the most part not just really anybody you know but somebody who you trust ask them for help um because god doesn't want us to think that we have to have it all together everything is supposed to be no 